uh, as per the discussion here of the data set, actually, and the disconnected mode and disconnected architecture yesterday in the last class, uh, we said that actually uh, data can be retrieved from the data source and stored locally in the machine, the local machine, the same machine memory. We may retrieve one table, more than one that, and we may create relationships in between those entities. And this is all uh, due to the data set. Okay, and then you update, insert, truncate, or alter, let's say, to the objects or to the uh, data inside the objects, uh, whether the data set would be done to the local data set, not to the memory content, not to the uh, data source in the uh, back end, the database inside, in the back end resource. No, it's locally only. To fill the gap, in between the local memory and the resource in the back end in the database, let's say, there have to be a relationship. The data adapter comes in question. The data adapter comes in question. So the data set will work locally, will help the user to gain much time to manipulate the thing, actually, in a local way, and later on to commit, to commit later on what have been done, either in addition or in uh, diminution, the, da the data adapter will come in, in action, and we'll update the back-end resource using the local data set, the table data adapter, let's say, or the data adapter only, or the SQL data adapter. Syntax, syntax of creating, let's say, or declaring a data, let's say, data adapter uh, object is the following. So a SQL client, actually, entity, which is the SQL data adapter, and it is actually from a class called SQL data adapter. This is a defined variable, we call it whatever we want here. In this example, it is named SDA, shortcut of, or shortcut of, shortcut of SQL data adapter, SDA. But it's a variable name, it's a user-defined variable name. So whatever we, uh, however, sorry, we declare it here. Later on in the program, we, we can utilize it. So SQL data adapter in this example, let me come back here. We'll find it actually in somehow. We are going to actually uh, before I move this uh, table adapted would be utilized to fill the contents actually in control when we talk about the retrieval it would fill the controls whether, whether it is a list box or let's say grid view or even a simple let's say control panel actually uh, a one value based uh, control like the label or let's say text box so the table adapter let's say this, the data adapter will be utilized to fill the control with values retrieved from this data set. This is the main purpose. So after creating the, uh, the, 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 the table adapter, it would be utilized to, to test actually the, uh, the content somehow. somehow. Let me just uh, see here. Actually, we are uh, declaring, uh, let us say, a reader. Let me have actually a clear view of this graph here, if I find it. Even though, even though, In this example, it's not discussing. It's not discussing the uh, table adapter. It's discussing only the data reader, which is in the in the connected mode. It's not in the disconnected mode. Remember, we discussed the ta the data reader and the data set. The data reader it is to be utilized with the connected mode, where we may find actually a, a, a continuous connection to be live during the, uh, the the life cycle of the process. Data reader. So at the end of the day, we'll be actually utilizing uh, this data reader to pass a query, which is here in this example, the select star from, it's a, it's a query, SQL query, to be passed, and then to be executed, execute reader here. We are using it because we are even a, a bunch of fields here, everything from this out, from this out, yes, everything from this out. So the execute reader can, can, can solve. Those are per title of example only. <clears throat> One of the uh, point of views that we can refer to is that we may use values directly to test actually the uh, output of a query. In this sense, see here the, the example of this query here, the clause where clause. We are just retrieving everything from the customer table with a, with a constraint. If the ID is ALFK, 
if this is the ID, customer ID, so the profile will be retrieved. This is a constraint here, this is a constraint. If we're talking about a robust query, this value would be actually read securely. Thus, we may change this here, this value here, with a variable name. We declare a variable, SQL variable. So the variable in SQL, it has to start with an at. At name here, this is a variable. In this example here, the variable name is customer ID. Customer ID is a simple variable, it's placehold, where an ID would be stored. So this customer ID here, it would have it been initialized with a value in the program. This is more robust, actually. We are controlling this value, what it would have in order to secure this query fully versus the program. Thus, we talk about robust commands. So here, we may pass later on, actually, this uh, uh, the value to this uh, uh, variable here. But we can read it from the interface, from the, in, uh, this, let's say, the front-end interface. In this example here, text box 3. We saw that in the lab, and we will see it again and again. It's not new for us. Uh, unless you have any questions, otherwise I'll pass to the chapter number uh, four. Actually, if you have any questions, otherwise I'll pass to the next. I'll give you a chance to ask if you have any questions, please. Any questions, please? No. Yes? Great, so let's move one step further. Chapter number five, not number four, sorry. Uh, actually, upon, upon the understanding now, the three units we finalized so far, they are capable of giving us the chance to know that we are able to create a web solution. Chapter number one, we're talking about the, the .NET, front-end interfaces. Chapter number two, we're talking about the SQL Server, the back-end the solutions. Chapter number three, the Arrow.net, the connectivity from the front end to the back end channels, the path how to get connected from the front end to the back end, technologies utilized to retrieve data. Confirming the connectivity and assuring connectivity in between the controls, the controls, the front end, and the data resource in the back end is the work of the bending. We refer to the data bending in order to assure the connectivity of the control where the data source control, the .NET controls, labels, text boxes, fields, whatever is box, or let's say, any control from the toolbox can be utilized to be populated with a data and to assure that it has been connected and the data being populated, it's the role of the data binder. And this is the chapter number four, what it is about, data binder. As per the definition we saw, okay. Uh, for, for achieving such scenario to say that the data has been bended and the uh, uh, control has been populated with data, there are two components that we have to actually to uh, present. The uh, source of the data, the data, what it is. Actually, I'm gonna populate, for example, a list box. A list box, as we, like we saw last class, uh, from the chapter number one, whatever. It is a uh, control that has to have a multi-value, let's say, list of values. Okay, what is the source of those values? This is the first component that has to be defined by the data binder, the data source. The second component, the action. Okay, we found the data source and we specify the data source. We move to the next step, which is, yes, let's act, do, data bind. The first property is just a specificity, it's a property, it's a destination, it's a path the data source. The second one, it's a method. See here, it's a name. After that, there are two parentheses. There are two parentheses here. Those two parentheses here means that this data bin, it's a predefined method. It's a method. Remember very well, please. It's a method that would have an action to do, which is to bind, to connect the back end with the front end. Data bind. It's a method that would have the role of bringing the data from the data source 
to the control. Control, for example, label, text box, list box, grid view, whatever. So from here to the control, the role of this data bin is to bring the data to connect and to show the data, and to populate the control with the data from the data source. Simply, simply like that. Such a behavior, such a behavior, this bin in here, and such an action to be done, this data bin here, it has to have actually uh, been launched due to an event handler. The event handler, as we saw and we uh, practiced on that, it might be a button to click, it might be actually a link to click also, it might be a, an image to load, it might be the load of the full page at the beginning of load in the page, everything would, would be populated, so the bin would come there. And this is the, the very successful and the very famous way how to, it's not unique, but when load in the page, the data bin will come in action. So the page load is the perfect event handler behind the execution of the data binder. It's not a unique place, but it's the perfect one actually because we do not need the user to interfere to bin the, and to populate the controls. Immediately would be populated. You open the page, you find all the data. So who did that? It's the page load event. Great, great. Yeah, okay. Um, one of the considerations here of this uh, binding, it is that we are not going to bind everything and we're not going to use this uh, technology because of its bit of complexity. It's not complex, but because of its, uh, of its definition, we will define this binding with the list boxes. Actually, we are going to deal, deal with the lists in general, the lists in general, to populate data using the binding methodology here, to bind. Whatever all the lists that we actually we defined, we can use. We may we may refer to the grid views, the lists, the list box and the data list, something like that. And all the kinds of lists we can use. Mainly those are the four main lists defined within the toolbox we have in Visual Studio. Uh, and we see that just in uh, in definition here. Generally, as we said, the binding would happen actually, uh, and it has to with an event handler. It will not run by itself unless it is being uh, stimulated. Uh, the best place to use is the page load or the, the let's say, the pre-render. The pre-render is not only the page load, also the page pre-render. It's another place where we can run the data binder. Those two events, those two events, they can actually act to launch the binder to activate the binder without the user interference. But remember, can we just activate the data binding using uh, a button click? Absolutely, we can. You, uh, using a link or a hyperlink to click? Absolutely. So it's not restricted, but actually, because it is being, to, it is to be done automatically. So the page load or the page pre-render is one of the best uh, event handlers. Otherwise, we can customize the. Uh, event handler. <clears throat> okay, I come back to this slide. I come back to this slide. Just let me proceed one step here to make you understand. Okay, once we click any of the values here, for example, let's look here. Let's do this drop down list here, this one here. Let's look to this drop down list. The, this is a list of values. Author number one, author number two, and so on. If we click the author number two, for example, later on when we submit, the details of this author two only will be displayed. How the computer will recognize that we specify the author number two, not the first one or the third one or the fourth one or whatever. How he will recognize that? We use it because if I ask you how many students we have in the University of Nisbet, our campus here, they are named Muhammad. How many? They are numerous with the same name. But how many students, they have the same ID? None. Every student has 
a unique ID. That's good because of this understanding only. Every and each single value inside a list control, inside the list control, there are two properties to set, mainly, not only. Mainly, there are two properties the text to display and the ID to make the system link with the, with the value. The ID because it's unique, and the text is for us, for humans, for the users to, uh, to understand what is it, uh, which one is wanted to be, let's say, manipulated. So two properties mainly we need, not only. There are other properties, we see them now in a while. But those are two main properties to make the system run well. The text to display to the user, and the ID, which is unique, which has to be unique. To make the system actually link the value with the action. Other properties we may find actually, other than uh, this uh, here, this uh, other, than th other than those, not this, other than those two properties here, they are actually available for us to use once needed. We may talk about actually the uh, field value, we may talk about the uh, number of items and the order the sequence of the items uh, and so on one of the most important thing is the event handler when we talk about the button the event handler is the click when you talk about the label the event handler is still the click but when you talk about the list how many how many let's say let's come back to the same list box here drop down menu i want to click Okay, I clicked on the drop-down list. Is the event for the first, oh, third, second, third, fourth, and which one? No, the click is not the event handler for the list. The click is not, let's say, is not the best event handler for the list. Why? Because we have multi-value. We have to choose a value and we have to change and we can change any time. And every time we change, the event value results has to be different. If we choose this, the first, let's say, candidate or the first value, properties of the first value has to appear. If we've chosen the, uh, proper, the second value, let's say, the properties of the second value has to appear, and so on. Thus, the event handler for a list cannot be a click, but can be selected, indexed, changed. Selected, indexed, changed. What does it mean? means when we click the first, so the index is one. When we click the second, so the index is two. When we click the third, so the index is three. It changes. Thus, once the index has been changed, an action would be launched. It is, this is the best event handler for, an, for a list. The selected index changed. An example, and a very good example here, it's a very good example to make us understand what does mean a list and the correlation and the work of the bindon, the work of the bindon. Here we have actually, as per the C here, let me just bring your attention to, what is this? This is a bulleted list. This one here, what I'm highlighting right now, it's a bulleted list. It's a list with dots, like this one here, yeah, bulleted list. Okay. But we have many values to display in this what is this? Here we have only one ID. We have only one, let's say, text. Here it is, text field. And we have only one value. How many, how, how we are going to display all of those things here? Google, Bing, ABC Search, Yahoo, DuckDuckGo. How we are going to display all of those search engines, links, inside one, what is this? It is actually the role of this Bend in here. We are going to refer to each value with an ID. So we are going to give an ID, a different ID to each value. And we are going to display them as per the rule here, the list, how it looks like. It's a bulleted list, so it will be displayed like this way, bulleted order. 
the data source are the orals. Here is the orals. This is the oral. The data source here. We said it is the orals. What are the orals? This is the orals. What is this orals? It's a variable. It's an array variable. Array, what does it mean? It has multi values. Value number one, comma. Then value number two, then comma. Then value number three, then comma, and so on. So, multi values, each is separated. They are separated with, with commas and they are stored in an array. So, each cell in the array it holds one value. And the value, the one value, what it has? It has a text. And it has a URL. So the text will be representing the text field. And the URL would be representing the value field. So this is what the computer understands. And this is what the human or the user sees. The text is Google. He is the Google. And the link would be www.google.com. The text is, is Bing. Here is Bing, the text is the Bing. And the URL is www.bing.com. This is the link for the Bing. And so on. For all the others. Uh, this, is a good, actually, uh, this is a good actually example to make you understand what has been bended. Um, Yeah, yeah, good. Let's proceed. This is not the unique way how to make the uh, bending in action or to see the, uh, the bending in action, but this is actually a very good uh, example. Text represents here as per this example, only the text represents the value to be displayed for the users. The URL represents the link to that actually um, text. Okay. The ways of making bins is not to work with multi-valued controls only. The lists, they are examples of controls that they have to receive multi-values, many values, like the example we saw earlier, Google, Bing, Yahoo, IBC Search, and so on. We may go for a different type or kind of controls that they can receive only one value, like a label. A label, it receives only one value. We can concatenate values, yes, but at the end of the day, we have only one value to be linked to a label. Because of this, we define the single valued binder or data binder. Simply said here, simple data binder, simple data binder, the single value based, let's say, data binder, we can call it simple data binder, simple data binder. Thus, we are going to represent only one value and only one text. Very simple, actually. We can do the same thing, actually. And we need the two same properties, let's say the data source and the data bin. We need both of them, still. But the control only, it receives only one value and only one text. Because of this only here, here, the uh, the uh, same technology utilized for the same technology utilized for the simple binder, the simple data binder, used for uh, let's say populating one base, let's say value control like the label, for example, can be utilized to populate a multi-value control like the list. Here we talk about the repeated value binder, or we may say list binder. Simple binding for populating control that receives only one, that can receive only one value. A repeated value, or let's say list value, or list binding, sorry, can be utilized to populate a control that can receive multi values, like the lists. Drop down list, list box, review, so on. Okay, the how it works now, the scenario how it works here, but what it concerns the uh, 
single or a simple uh, binding here, there have to be actually an annotation where to put the value or where to display the value in the front and interface. Because, because we may specify, let me just, uh, I, I got disconnected. We may specify a portion of a label to, to just represent, for example, uh, the ID only. We need to display the student Fulan has the ID, uh, tell, 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 has got a GPA or a grade. This A is one value where we are going to display it from the data source. To display this value here, we need to, to specify the thing inside the front end interface. It has to be inside the front end interface, otherwise, it will fail. If it's not specified in the front end interface, means in the ASPX page, it will not run later on. So, to achieve the simple binding, or let's say the single data binding in the front end, An annotation, like the directive, we, we define that, has to be stated in the front end at the location where to display the value of the simple binder. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm 